Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. He is worthy to be praised. And we worship and adore Him. We thank you for joining us tonight as we're going to get started for our Wednesday night Bible study. And we bring you greetings from Faith Outreach Deliverance Church in Bridgeton, New Jersey, where the pastor is Dr. Lillian C. Allen, and the overseer is Apostle Roma D. Allen, Sr. Tonight, <clears throat> we're going to continue our study over in the book of Psalms in the 119th division, picking up at the 41st verse. Tonight, we're going to hone in on verses 47 and 48. And our topic for tonight is experiencing the Father's love. But before we touch any of those things, we're going to have prayer, read our scriptures for every day, followed by the seven works of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you for this day and this opportunity. We magnify your name because you alone are holy and you alone are full of grace and mercy. You alone are Lord of Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the word of God. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us and to give us a revelation in the knowledge of Christ. We ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that if you would search our hearts and try our thoughts in anything that is not pleasing in your sight, we ask you, Father God, that you would reveal it, that we may have clean hands and a pure heart. And Father God, we repent right now of our thoughts and our actions and our words. Oh God, things that we did that were not pleasing unto you, whether we were slowful or moving too fast, we ask you to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord God, I submit myself unto you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service, that I may decrease, Father God, that you may increase, and that the word that we share tonight, that we will grow in your word by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Scriptures for every day, wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with all the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11 and 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness, Ephesians 3, 17 through 18, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, with passage of knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians 2, 8 through 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelled all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 1 and 8, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. 
expect a move of God suddenly Romans 8 and 11 but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal natural earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you please note this is talking about your body that you have now not the one you're going to receive one day in heaven allow the Lord to impart his life into you by placing faith in his word begin to praise him for this promise the seven works of grace your bill of rights repentance atonement sorrow conversion transform change justification validation legalization sanctification consecration purification baptism of the Holy Spirit beginning redemption liberation deliverance freedom and perfection excellence and faultlessness amen those are our the seven works of grace and first we read the scriptures for every day you will find me on tonight over in Psalms 119 as we continue We're going to continue in Psalms 119, starting at verse 41, and our topic tonight is experiencing the love of the Father. One of the ways, the one of the ways of experiencing the love of the Father, which means demonstrating how we love Him, is our faith in His Word. And we know, according to Scripture, over in John the first chapter so I want to build our foundation as we're talking about the love of the Father experiencing the love of the Father and it's not so much focusing on how much he loves us but how we reciprocate that love how do we show our love for the Father so that's what I want to talk about tonight. How do we show our love for the Father? And all that He has done, how do we show Him that we love Him? So I want to take a look, and I'm going to put these scripture texts up on the screen so that you can follow along. So the first place I want to go to is John first chapter first through the 14th verse just to build our foundation for our for our subject text in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there was a man sent from God whose name was John the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh unto the world he was he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh but of the will of man but of God not of the will of man but of God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten son of the father full of grace and truth so God loved us so much that he gave us the word which is Jesus Christ the word took on the form of flesh and came down and dwelt among men 
So God has already demonstrated his love for us. It is written as a testament unto us that he loved us so much. But how do we show our love back to him? How is it that we show our love to the Father? So I'm going to put that question up on the screen. How do we show our love to the Father? We show our love to the Father by believing in his word, believing in Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead on the third day. And so that is the beginning. We believe by faith. Another way that we show our love unto him is found over in John, once again, the 14th chapter. So we already know that God loves us, right? But he needs to know that we love him. And we love him not because what materialistic things he can give us. We love him because he gave us the word. We love him because he wants us to have eternal life. And so we love him because he gave his only begotten son. He gave us the word, which is Jesus. So I'm going to put that up on the screen. Amen. All right. He loved us. Also, how do we show our love? By keeping his commandments. So love him because of his son. Jesus Christ. All right, and we show him love by our faith. And keeping his commandments. Which his commandments is anything that he instructs us to do. All of the commandments, we've talked about this over the past couple of weeks. God's law is what he says. And he has also said to us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so he loved us enough to give us what we need to survive. What we do in return is we believe his word by faith, which is in Jesus Christ, and we keep in our hearts, we become obedient to what he tells us to do. So when we're talking about experiencing the Father's love, I really want to look at how are we returning that love back to him because he has already demonstrated his love for us. Now let's go over to Psalms 119. And we're going to read verses 41 Through 48. Amen. All right. And it reads as follows Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. So here the writer is saying, I need your word so that when I am approached, I know what to say. Scripture also tells us that whenever we go out on an assignment, we don't have to, he's going to give us what to say. We should ask, seek, and knock about what it is that he wants to say at any given time to his people. We should never try to 
come up with our own words that we want to give to the church and remember we are the church so when we come together we gather together we want to come together in the spirit of unity and we want to worship and honor God now the individual who is going to minister or teach the Word of God should have gone into some much needed time of prayer and consecration to ask God what he wants to say because we are all going through different things at different times we all have different appetites and so he we need to know what to feed what to give out that's a good shepherd so the writer is saying right here so shall I have wherewith to answer him that approaches me reproaches me for I trust in thy word so if you give me what to say when I am reproached when I am cornered when I find myself that the enemy is coming up against me what I trust in is your word and so if I have your word in my heart if I meditate on your word day and night when the enemy comes in like a flood one of my spiritual weapons of warfare is your word and so I need the word of God I need your word another way of demonstrating how we love God is we want more of his word so let me put this up here also we show love to God by desiring his word we show love to God that's how we show love to God by desiring his word now someone may say that the word is a bunch of rules and regulations but in all actuality the word is Jesus Christ and so if I say I love Jesus Christ what I'm really saying is I love the word and I demonstrate my love to, of Jesus Christ by accepting him as my Lord and Savior why because the word is going to purify me the word is going to cleanse me the word is going to correct me the word is going to shape and mold me the word is going to set me free the word is going to heal me the word is going to deliver me and so I want to fall in love that's going to do all of that for me so we have to put in perspective where our love and our faith and our trust alive so where is my trust where is it where is my hope if I know that the word is going to do all of this for me I want to fall in love with the word because the word is what it, it's my answer it's my comfort it's my counselor it's my strength so I need the word I want to fall in love with the word of God let's read that again because that's good it says let thy mercies come also unto me O Lord even thy salvation according to thy word so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me for I trust in thy word I trust in your word because your word is going to do so much for me without your word I can't survive so I need your word and once again tonight we're talking about experiencing the father's love so how do I I'm experiencing my father's love he's already given it to me he's already given it to me I want to reciprocate it I want to give it back and how do I give back my love to him but by faith and obedience verse 43 says and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth for I have hoped in thy judgments so shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever so I don't this isn't a sometimes thing I don't want to have a pattern of jumping in and out of the word I want to get to a place in my life that I I'm in the word I remain in the word because guess what Jesus said if you abide in me and my word abide in you 
you can ask what you will and it shall be given unto thee so here's what he's saying if if my word abide in you and you're asking for that which is in you it shall be done unto you the plainest way i can say that is saying what god says repeating what god said knowing the promises of god a lot of times we are asking for what he has already released and so we shouldn't ask we should just say thank you thank you for healing me thank you for healing my disease you've already sent your word to heal my disease so i thank you for that i thank you for deliverance i thank you for salvation I thank you for instructions. I thank you for directions. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's already given that. So I'm going to thank him for releasing what I need. And so I have to turn from saying I need instructions at times to just going ahead and saying thank you for releasing the instructions that I need. So I'm growing in my faith. I'm thanking him in advance. He's already said it's mine. He says, I, behold, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So guess what? Thank you for giving me the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I'm saying it in advance. So once again, experiencing the love of the Father. How do I reciprocate my love? How do I return my love back to him by faith in his word? When I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, accepting his son jesus christ i was accepting the word that's what i was doing the more i come into the knowledge of christ the more i come into the knowledge of christ i it, i'm taking i'm coming into more knowledge of the word and so what i want to really hone in on and get across to all of us is we cannot separate jesus from the word We're taking in the word, we're taking in Jesus. Because we just read, the word came down in the likeness of flesh. And so I'm going to demonstrate my love. I want to love him back. It's a two-way thing. But the most wonderful thing about it is, is, is I didn't have to do anything up front to get his love. He loves me. Even in my disobedience now, he still loves me. He rebukes me and he chastises me because he wants me to have the full benefit of his love. God wants us to have the full benefit of his love. He does not want us to come short of, experience his of experiencing his love. And so much that he demonstrated that through individuals such as Paul who wrote in scripture texts that his desire is that we would come and grow into the knowledge of Christ that's over in Ephesians the first chapter 15th verse it says wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That is love. And he wants us to grow in love grow in truth also over in ephesians the third chapter listen to this for this cause i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height 
and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So he has already demonstrated his love, and he wants us to experience his love. But I must return that love. He loved us from the beginning. He, he shaped, he created the heaven and the earth and the things that are in because he had us in mind. So he loved us from afar. He loved us from the beginning. Now it's my turn to return that love. It's not a one-sided relationship. And love is patient. Love is kind. Listen, he is a merciful God. He is patient. He has grace and mercy. He does not turn his back on us. He does not give up on us. But he said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So it's my turn to return that love back to him. And I return my love back to him by my faith in his word, which is his son, Jesus Christ. So let's go further. Verse 45 says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And so here the writer, uh, because this is David, which says that, listen, no matter where I am, no matter who I am around, no matter what, position they are in life I'm going to tell of your testimonies Jesus said that if we are ashamed of him to confess him before men he'll be ashamed to confess us before his father I don't want that so I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ I don't want to be ashamed to say that yes I love him that he first loved me and I am learning to return that love back to him. And it is nothing that I can do in my flesh. Listen, there is no amount of money that could repay him for the love that he has demonstrated for each and every one of us. We love him by faith. Our faith in his word. And then by our obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. Because my commandments consist of the good thoughts and plans that I have towards you to give you a good and expected end. So what I'm telling you, it is for your benefit. What I'm telling you, it, it is for your good. It is not to harm you, but to bless you, to keep you so that you can survive. I'm never going to leave you astray. And when I give you my commandments, I'm going to give you some help to keep my word. That's how much he loves us. I'm going to release some help so that you can understand my word, so that you can keep it, so that it can keep you, so it can guide you, it can direct you, it can counsel you. My word is my love. Now, all you got to do is have faith in my love. All you have to do is believe in my love for you. I don't have a hidden agenda. I love you regardless. I don't want you to go and have eternity in hell. I don't want you to be full of sickness. I don't want you to be in the, the bonds and the chains of sin. I don't want you there. I love you. And this is how much I love you. And return for that love. I want you to believe and trust in me. Verse 47 says, And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. So we have to learn to love what God said. It doesn't always feel good. The rebuke does not feel good. The chastisement does not feel good. No, it does not. The correction does not feel good. And oftentimes we go through trials and tribulations. They don't feel good. When he 
sends us out to do something, it's out of our comfort zone. That doesn't always feel good. Putting his will above our own. Putting ourselves aside. To do a work for the Lord. That doesn't always feel good. But we learn that it's for our good. And when we have a heart. Knowing that what I am doing. Pleases the Father. And it is work for the kingdom of heaven. That if I spend some time studying the word of God. So that I can share preaching or teaching. However he may have me to do it. That the word that is in me. When it is released, someone is set free. Someone is healed by the word. Somebody is getting an understanding and revelation of the word. Somebody is coming into the knowledge of Christ. Because I loved him enough to learn about him and to ask questions and to grow. Because I want to see somebody else grow. I want to see somebody else healed, delivered, and set free. I want to see someone else execute their faith I love him enough to keep his commandments I love him enough to be obedient that's what that scripture is saying let me read it again and I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved I learned to love your word I learned to love it how do we learn to love something when we get an understanding of it at first Listen, it's hard, and it could be bitter, and it feels like, listen, we are constantly getting a whooping. But it's for our good. And so I, I, I need to love him beyond just him releasing a promise to me. Uh-huh. I don't want to just love him simply because he's going to give me something. That's not true love. Because when he say no, or when he say not now, I can't take my love back. My love has to be committed. God is committed to loving us. So we have to get committed to loving him. And we grow in this thing. It's a commitment. It's a relationship. And we have a relationship with the Father through the Son. Now, I can't get to the Father without the Son. And I can't get to the Son without the Holy Spirit. So I have to build a relationship. He loved us enough to say, I want to have fellowship with you. But it has to be through my word. Yes. Yes. God wants a relationship with us. He wants fellowship with us, but it has to be through his word. And that's how it's done. And so we have to learn to love our relationship with him. He's not trying to antagonize us. He not, he's not trying to just um, control us. He has a purpose. He has a plan. And once we come into the reality of, okay, this is what this plan is all about. Oh, I can get with this plan because there is no hidden agenda. There's no isms. There's no schisms. I can get with this plan. I like this plan right here. This plan right here is going to turn around for my good. This plan right here is, is for my benefit. This plan right here, oh, I can do this right here. Because of this plan, I can have eternal life. Oh, I can do this plan right here. Mm-hmm. I can do this. I can do this plan right here. You know, sometimes uh, if you go to, say, um, a uh, weight trainer or either a dietitian or even our doctors, okay, and they give us a plan, and we look at that plan, it's stuff on there we don't even like to eat. It's stuff on there that it has no taste, but it's for our good. I remember when I first really, really had major battles with acid reflux. And I had to go to the doctor, and my doctor gave me this very bland diet. Basically, I couldn't have no soul food. I love to drink Cokes. Stuff like that could not have. 
not really into spicy stuff but could not have it at all and so i looked at this diet that listen i can only have this bland food no gravies um nothing tomato based stuff i just couldn't eat not a lot of fried food that means stuff you like to eat and enjoy doctor said nope 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 And I would stick to it for a while. And then I would go and I would get what I wanted. And when I would overdo it, I felt the effect. I didn't want to follow that plan. I knew it was good for me, but I didn't want to follow it. The plans of God are for our good. And we don't always want to follow His plans. But when we realize the plan is good. It's for my benefit. I can fall in love with it. I can I can have faith in it. I can believe in it. I can become obedient to it. Because it's for my good. Let's read some of the commentary. A major emphasis of Psalms 119 is the psalmist's delight in and heartfelt love for the word of God. Joy comes to his heart as he reads and obeys God's word. So when we read the word of God, joy should come to our heart. On last week, we shared how the word of God is a counselor to us. Because as we read the examples, it should counsel us where we are. That's why the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us to the word. Because it is a testimony and it is also our counsel. So whatever we're going through in our life, whatever the situation may be, the word of God is our counsel. That's how much he loves us. So counsel is always present. When we pray and say, I don't know what to do about this situation, lead and guide me. For we know not what we ought to pray for. But the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us here on earth as well as in heaven and then we have jesus christ in heaven making intercession for us with the father and so whenever a need arise he'll guide us to the word and so i can look at that word and say that is the counsel that i need sometimes he'll say listen he'll lead me over to um in the the passage of scripture where uh, the prophet tells the king to change course because the enemy has become so accustomed to your movement they're waiting to attack you because they know you've become so um you're you're in a ritual you're 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 you you're becoming um they know your every step and so sometimes when that happens the holy spirit will lead me to that passage of scripture i now realize that was him counseling me to say change course mm -hmm. whenever a need arises and i'm going to him and he will direct me in the word of god it could be the instance of the prophet the woman uh, of, of God saying hey my husband was a prophet you knew him and now we're in debt and the prophet says what would you have me to do and ask what she have in her hand well the counsel is what is it that you have and so we look at the word of God as our counsel and when we come to that reality I can fall in love more and more with the word of God because it is my counsel the word of God, the written testament, is more, the Old and New Testament is more than about stories written. It's not fantasy. All scripture is written by the inspiration of God. And so the word was written for our good. And when I look at it that way, I can fall in love with that. Because everything that I need is truly in the Word of God. There is no better plan than that. We can't get any better than that. That everything that we need is already written for us. So when I'm reading the Word of God, joy should come to my heart as I read and listen, obey God's Word. 
when I when I become obedient to the word of God, then I know that I fall in line in compliance to receive the promises of God because I was obedient. Now, if I'm not obedient, then I don't have access. I need to repent and I need to get corrected. That's another thing about the word of God. It's counsel. It shows instructions of times when someone became disobedient to what God told them to do and to see the consequences. So that's counsel for me. They say, oh, oh you better stay, you better stay in, in right standing with God because you don't want to suffer those consequences. Now their suffering was their suffering. It does not mean that I'm going to go through the exact same thing. What it is telling me is this is what happens when you don't believe. This is what happens when you are not obedient. So let us fall in love with it. It says, likewise, when we read the Bible with an earnest desire to understand and keep Christ's commandment, the Holy Spirit imparts God's love to our hearts. So the Holy Spirit, which he is revelation, he gives us a revelation. He helps us to understand and to comprehend just how much God loves us. Until we come into that revelation a person may look at it as a bunch of rules that we got to go by and some people might even say oh god don't want me to have no fun god don't want me to laugh god don't want me to really live he just want me to be in this box and don't do anything but that is before we come into the knowledge of god he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly but until I come into the knowledge of that, I'm just going, you know how we did? We looked across the way. We used to call the people who go to the church, oh, that's them, what they call them, them holy rollers. Oh, they holier than thou. They don't do nothing. All they do is go to church and go home. They don't have a life. Well, you know what? In times past, because that's all our forefathers taught. And so they taught another generation so we can't be upset with them because they did not teach us the truth. They only taught what they knew because a lot of them could not read. And so they went off what was said to them. But we are in a time of revelation knowledge. We are in a time like never before that we must seek and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. To reveal unto us so we can really comprehend what it means to live a life of Christ. What does that really mean? It's okay to laugh. It is. It is okay to enjoy your life. But we do it in perspective according to the will of God. That's right. We can enjoy our life without killing anybody without gossip and division we can enjoy our life in peace we sure can love and harmony yes we can we can have a good full life so we have joy the holy spirit imparts god's love to our hearts helps us to discern the truth of god's word and bring us great joy and delight so, this is all how God loves us. How do I show my love to him? I want to understand his word. That's how I show my love. Help me to understand. Help me to apply your word to my life. That's how I show my love. That's how I demonstrate my love. If I am rebellious, that's not love. If I'm disobedient, that's not love. If I'm always fighting against the word of God, bucking against the system, that's not love. But yet, if I say I have Jesus in my heart, but I won't follow what he says, I won't believe what he says, how is that really love? 
because he's already said if you love me keep my commandments so it becomes a, a, a time of self-evaluation to say there is this old song if you love Jesus you ought to show some sign well that sign has nothing to do with my physical appearance it has nothing to do with me buying things and saying oh I bought this for the for 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 God no that's not how I show my love for Christ speaking a bunch of eloquent words and quoting a bunch of scriptures um, that's not that's not how I demonstrate my love for Christ walking around like a, a human Bible and and quoting scriptures and oh and 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 having all of these great prayers with all these big words and that's not how I show my love for Christ mm -mm. I show my love by my faith in his word I show my love through my obedience. I show my love how I love the least to the greatest. How I treat people. That's how I show my love. Because truly he said with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He drew us with his love. And now that I'm here I want to love you back. I don't want to be that spoiled child that standing up and having a tension tantrum that say if you love me give me this if you love me give me that that's mm -mm. no I want my love to be genuine I want my love to be true I want my I don't want my love for God to have any hidden agenda because he doesn't have a hidden agenda when it comes to me his love for me is genuine his love for me is pure he has already demonstrated his love what am I doing to reciprocate that love how am I showing my love to the father that's the most important question we can ask ourselves tonight how do I show my love to the one who loved me first? Who the, to the one who thought about my healing and my deliverance. Before I, listen, before I even had any trouble. Before I was even born or thought of. He was already thinking about if something came up in my life. How I could be delivered and set free. He was already thinking about that. He was already, he was already putting a plan in place. For me and for you before we were before we even hit the earth he was already putting things in place he loved us from the beginning and he's saying believe me believe that I love you have faith in my love for you have faith in my word. Have faith in what I say. Have faith in what I have done on your behalf. I did all of this for you. Everything that I've done, I've done it all for you. That's how much I love you. Delighting in God's word develops into an even deeper love for all God's ways. Because we have come to love him. We love the scriptures that reveal him and his will to us. As a result, we have been made one with him. And our hearts now have a profound love and devotion to his revealed love. So as we come into the knowledge of just how much he loves us. And we read the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is giving us a revelation. You can sit back and say, oh, wow, he really does love me. He has always loved me. He loved me from the beginning of time. He loved me before he knew me. He loved me before I even accepted him. He loved me. So think about that song again. If you love Jesus, you ought to show some sign. 
Or what sign do I show? How do I demonstrate my love back? How is it that I do it? By my faith? By my obedience? That's how I show my love. By my attention to what he says. So let's talk about that. I don't want to ignore what God said. I don't want to take it lightly what he said. And so when he is speaking, I want him to have my full attention. I want him to have my undivided attention. I'm looking forward for him talking to me. And he leads and guides me by the Holy Spirit. So I have an expectation. I have a joy. I have an excitement. That he going to lead me in the word. That's right. He going to lead me in the work. He want me to understand. And he's going to lead me. He's going to give me a comprehension. I look forward to that. I love whenever I hear something in my spirit. And I don't know how long it's been. Probably two years or so. I know it was the Holy Spirit gave me this saying that I always say. Whenever I hear something or dream something. And I say, take me to the word. Do you not know that I get excited when I say, take me to the word? Because I know what's going to happen. He's going to lead and guide me in scripture. And then I can I can spend some time and, and study and really dig. And, and he's opening up to me that he loved me enough to talk to me. And then to take me to the example in the word. And so, when that, listen, when I hear something and I say, take me to the word. Take me to the word. Take me to the word. And I have an expectation that he's going to do that. And I love that. I love it. I rejoice. Because I know that's what he wants for me. Verse 48 says, my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. So I'm going to meditate on your statutes, Father God. I want to now look at some notes. I do have a few more minutes. Over in John, the 14th chapter, and the 21st verse. So let me put this up on the screen. All right. So let's read John 14, beginning at the 21st. And I'm going to go through to the 24th. It says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So he's saying it to us right here. Let me read that again. He that hath my commandments, we have his commandments, we have the word, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So... This is how Christ manifests himself to us through the word. Another word for manifest is revelation. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Show up, manifest. You know, we're looking for the manifestation. We're looking for the love of Christ to show up. We're looking for that healing bomb and Galad to show up. If we love him and keep his commandments, he's going to show up. One of the commandments is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I'm trusting in him with all my heart. I'm leaning not to my own understanding. And guess what? He's going to show up by directing me in all my paths. I'm looking for him to show up. Let me read that again. 
he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him judah said unto him not as a cart lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words if a man love me that's male or female in jesus there is neither male nor female it is neither jew jew nor greek we are spirit it is no respect of person so just because the scripture text says man that doesn't exclu exclude one man that's for all of us it says and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's which sent me remember god sent the word and the likeness of flesh let me let me let me read that again he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's which sent me so what jesus is saying to us is not his word it is the word of the father and when we speak the word it's not us that's speaking it we're speaking the word of the father we're led by the holy spirit on what to speak it is what god wants to say let me read this really quick obeying the commandments of christ is not optional for those who would have eternal life obedience to christ though never perfect must nevertheless be genuine it is an essential aspect of saving faith springing from our love for him without love for christ trying to obey his commandments becomes legalism to the person who loves christ and strives to obey his commandments consistently christ promises a special love grace and his deepest inward presence those who truly truly love jesus and obey his words will experience the immediate presence and love of the father and the son the father and the son come to believers by means of the holy spirit it should be noted that the father's love is conditioned on our loving jesus and being loyal to his word that's what it's all about that's what it's all about so ask yourself as we're coming to a close how do i show my love to the father how do i show my love to him do i really love him do i really because if i really loved him i would believe his word by faith and i would be obedient to his word that's how i show my love I pray that you have enjoyed our Bible study on tonight. To God be the glory. As unless the Holy Spirit shifts us, we will continue in Psalms 119 until we have completed all of Psalms 119. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you and we magnify your holy name. You are worthy to be praised and there is none other like thee upon the earth. Father God, we just say thank you for your word tonight. And I just pray that we fall in love with your word increase our anticipation and our love and our desire for the word of god increase our hunger and thirst after the knowledge of christ oh god i thank you i speak a blessing upon your people oh god that we will grow that we will hunger and thirst lord god seeking you seeking the word of god that we will believe by faith that we will grow in our faith be encouraged by the word find joy in the word in the name of jesus oh lord god and that we will not settle lord god that you will continue to feed us fill us up lord god let us digest the word 
apply the word, live the word, walk in the word, share the word, oh God, until the ends of the earth. Oh God, and the more, God, we share the word, increase our hunger and feed us the more that we may live by every word that comes out of your mouth. I submit this supplication unto the Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed night, everybody. I love you in the Lord. Be encouraged and stay blessed. You are blessed on purpose. You already blessed. Be blessed on purpose. I love you.